The Humble Britannia, what a coin. It's a very beautiful coin and a very secure coin as well with lots of micro security features, which we're gonna have a look at here today and also talk about the potential future of Britannias in one ounce gold form. Are they going to become a little bit redundant, a little bit too expensive, too exclusive? Maybe the quarter ounce gold will replace it in the future, who knows? Let's dive in and have a good close look at these cool things made of silver and gold. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to this week's In Focus Friday where we look at cool things made of silver or gold. Now we're doing the Britannia this week. It's one of the quintessential coins from the Royal Mint representing everything that is British about our coinage, whether it be gold, silver or just circulation currency. It's been a mainstay for a very long time. But how much of a mainstay will something like this coin be, the one ounce gold Britannia? It's a big chunky coin and it's worth a lot of money. Will it actually just be out of reach for the vast majority of people in the future? And will we see the rise of the quarter ounce gold, which at the moment does have really high premiums when new from dealers and mints. And I would love to see those premiums come down over the course of the coming years. Certainly if gold starts to rise up, the premiums on these will make them unaffordable and undesirable. Could they be the future? Can they perhaps replace things like these one ounce gold coins? That and more in today's video. Whilst we're here, I have a lovely Britannia in silver, which is a bit funky because it's the error version. So this has got approximately, it's probably about 85 to 90 degrees worth of die rotation. And this is from 2022, really, really cool piece. And I've got some of these up for auction on eBay right now. We've got five in total. Those are all listed. There are links in the description box below. The auctions end on uh, Sunday and we ship worldwide with them. So if you're interested, go and check them out. But those are not how these coins should be. So very interesting pieces of coinage and history. So despite the fact that sometimes the Royal Mint gets it wrong and makes an error, in fact, we'll keep the silver one out on the table for now. Um, they are beautiful coins. There is no doubting that the Britannia, if we can even get the camera to focus on it, it's so beautiful it won't focus. There we go. Um, it's so good because of its security features. Now, security features on gold and silver coins are an interesting one. Do we pay much attention to them? Should we pay more attention to them? There are certainly a lot of benefits for having these little micro security features on our coins as there are more and more coins being faked every day Gold coins are a big one to fake. If you can fake a gold coin, you're standing to make an awful lot more money than you would if you're buying a silver coin, for example. So it is interesting to see that we see uh, more volume of silver coins in terms of it's a lot easier to make them en masse. But if you're doing a gold coin, you've really got to get it as good as possible because if somebody's spending thousand pounds on a gold coin, um, they want to make sure it's really, really real. So. There is an interesting kind of balance here for the fraudsters, for the fakers, for the coin makers out there, or the fake coin makers, I should say, to get it right. Now, what does the Britannia have in its favor in terms of those micro security details? Well, the first thing is the wavy background you see there is not easy to replicate at all. These take very, very high levels of precision of engineering of the coin dies. And of course they have different light plays across from different angles. So that in itself is a great little feature. Another one that a lot of people don't know about is in the shield. There's actually a whole bunch of miniature lines on the shield. It's very difficult to see. Let's see if we can get even closer in to the coin. So we can see just about, I think there, that there are lots of micro lines on the shield of the Britannia. That's another good one to look at. Another one that you may have just spotted, uh, if you haven't seen it already, is the edge lettering, or say edge lettering, the lettering around the sort of rim of the field of the Britannia. Those are really, really micro engraved. And remember, this is a one ounce gold Britannia, so this is quite large at the moment. If we get out the quarter ounce gold Britannia, those are still present and those are absolutely minuscule. You won't be able to see those without major magnification, but they are there. And then you go down even further to the 10th ounce gold Britannias and those are also there too. So 
Those are very easy to um, spot and check and just see if they're on there. These are not all Britannias, they're only the most recent ones, I think from 2020, I wanna say. They enhance their security on their coinage. And then we've got our last one here, which is a little hologram. We just got a security lock there, and if you get the angle right, you can see the trident. There we go, the trident of Britannia, and then you go over to the security lock. So the question I want to ask is really how good are these security features? Are they worth paying a premium for? Should other mints out there be doing better? I think they're worth paying for personally. I don't think if I was given a choice between one of these and an old school Britannia at the same price, I would take one of these as I think it's just more um, easy to have. If you are looking to sell this coin at some point in the future and you've got good high resolution images of it, then it's easier to kind of say, look, it is definitely genuine because it's got all of these security features on it. Not everybody has the gold testing machines like Sigmas um, and the like. It's always very difficult to know whether or not you've got a genuine article. But if you know to look for these types of things on the coins that you're getting in, then it is a good indication that something is pretty close to being perfect. You know, a cheap nasty knockoff even the silver britannias have all these features a cheap nasty knockoff will struggle to get these level of details they might do okay but if you know what to look for then these will be a more surefire way of actually checking whether or not it's worth uh, or worth its salt and worth its weight in silver and gold than anything else that's uh, what i was trying to go for now in terms of the second part of this video that i want to focus on so we've done security features is the cost of gold making it a bit of a prohibitive uh, sort of market for people looking to buy. Uh, it is interesting right now. I do see uh, a struggling market for um, selling at a premium. So if you're looking to sell a Gold Britannia a few years ago, you would be quite happily getting three or 4% over spot price for your gold coin. Now it has to be basically spot or one and a half percent over spot. Uh, dealers are struggling to shift second-hand bits of gold and silver that they used to sell five, six, seven percent over spot. More curious items, older Britannias, things like that. Um, I know I've paid that premium over spot for some of the older Britannias in my stack back in the day, but uh, now if I if I was having the budget to buy some gold right now, I wouldn't be paying more than a few percentage points over spot price. Uh, I just don't see it being practical that way. Now the other problem comes with the one ounce golds is that they are quite large and if uh, you have a situation where gold has gone to £2,000 an ounce, £3,000 an ounce, will people have enough money to buy a one ounce gold off you? Probably not. So the next question comes is, well, are smaller denominations going to sort of take over and become the real you know, money maker and money holder for gold coins? Quarter ounce is probably about as small as I would go with the exception of the sovereign being ever so slightly less. The sovereign is 0.2354 of an ounce, I think. And of course, a quarter ounce is 0.25. So a little bit less for a sovereign. Um, it's weird though, because the sovereigns versus the quarter ounce gold premiums are just very, very different. Brand new from dealers, you'll be looking at about 10, 11, 12% over spot price for a quarter ounce gold Britannia. But of course it's, just a quarter ounce gold coin like this why is it so high premium from the dealers it's a weird one I've never really understood it I've never really liked it and I've not got a great deal of quarter ounce golds within my stack but if you can get them at those you know sort of bullion level prices then I do think that they are a really good buy right now they're a great size they're not too small that you can't just lose them within two minutes of taking them out and to have a look at uh, they have, of course, a decent value in there. So at the moment, a quarter ounce gold. Uh, well, these six that we've got here on the table, um, I will have listed for sale today. Whether or not they'll have gone by the time this video goes live, I don't know. But they will be listed for sale at £390, which is about £1,560 an ounce. So around about what you'd pay for a pre for a sorry about what you pay for a one ounce gold right now. Um, dealers right now will be asking 425 for these coins at least, some a bit more. So it is, I think, an interesting one to see where, um, you know, where it might go in the future in terms of those premiums on quarter ounce golds. I do feel that the more that gold rises, we're not there yet, but I do think that the more that gold rises naturally, we're going to see a more popular size range emerge. 
and I think it's going to be the sovereign and the quarter ounce gold. This is your real realistic only option in that sort of size category if you want something that's pure. Sovereigns, of course, are uh, 22 karat gold, not 999 karat gold. Whether or not that makes a difference to some people is questionable in my mind. I don't really see a difference. Gold is gold at the end of the day, especially if it's a sovereign. Uh, very, very sought after, very collectible. So, yeah. There we have the Humble Britannia, both secure and interesting going forwards. If you are keen on our Era Britannia auctions, then again, there are links down in the description box below. Go and check those out. Um, they'll go for anywhere from 250 to 300 pounds a coin, I think. Um, so definitely worth checking out. And um, otherwise, that's it. Thank you very much to all of my ramblers who might be listening to the back end of the video. If um, you have enjoyed our content and you are not subscribed, then you know what to do. And if you want to show your support even further than just watching, then you can head on over to our website where I have got some bits of silver for sale. We've got some of our Apocalypse and Barter tokens, and we've also got a select number of our own gold products, the 10th ounce golds, uh, up for sale. So go and check those out if you're interested. Otherwise, that's it from me. Uh, this weekend, this Sunday, I'll be doing a quick video showcasing our forum bars. The 2023 one uh, sorry, 100 gram forum bars are ready and live and if you have a 2022 edition now is the time to get in touch. Otherwise that's it from me. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching and as always please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.